without further delay, we don't want to hear me whittling on, I'm going to introduce, who we're very happy and very excited to have with us, Richard Tice, our party leader. Good evening. Good evening. How is everybody? Oh, A wet Wednesday in Walsall. <laughs> Unusual. Normally it's sunny, I'm told. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for coming to listen to who we are, to what we're about, and what we're trying to achieve. Because the truth is that surely we all believe in the greatness of the United Kingdom. The Brexit Party are back rebranded as Reform UK and under the leadership of Richard Tice. The group plans to field 630 candidates at the next election, hoping to capitalise on discontent with the ruling Conservatives. Okay. So my name is Richard Case, I'm um, the spokesperson for West Worcestershire, so against Harriet Baldwin who's the Conservative MP there at the moment. Well, what is the brand? I mean, how is it different? I'll ask you a very simple question, how is it different to the Conservatives? How is it different? Um, well, I think a lot of us are, are just, we don't really see, there's been a lot of sleaze around the Conservative Party and we feel they've gone more socialist, like they've got high taxes um, and they seem to be going more globalist and a bit woke. And whereas we're more of like a traditional Conservative Party, um, you know, conservative with a small c. The state dictate what happens and you don't get much of a say, you know, less democracy, um, that kind of thing. Whereas we're, you know, we're, we're about democracy and freedom, you know, uh, which, is, which is what I see as British principles, really. Um, and sovereignty, I see. Uh, yeah, and sovereignty as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So what's your big pitch? I mean, you're going into West Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. What's your big difference to Harriet Baldwin, who's currently sitting MP? Well, I think there's a lot of a lot of um, policies that. I mean, we don't really. Um, just trying to think of some current things. You know, things like police force has been been um, shrunk over the last few years. Um, a lot more crimes increasing, kind of lo local gang crime, that kind of thing. Um, so it's all local issues as well as the national ones, which are things like, you know, being more self-sufficient, um, you know, energy, uh, being, being able to generate more energy locally um, instead of buying it in from, from um, Norway and Europe. Um, you know, we could, we could I know, I know um, there's, there's a lot of, oh, we're in front of the cash machine, <laughs> sorry, um, where was I, um, hello, I'm doing a bit, a bit of an interview with Joe. <laughs> Reform is occupying increasing space on the right of British politics. Current polls consistently place the party with a quarter of the Tories' vote share. The UK's electoral system means it's unlikely 6 to 10% of votes nationally will translate to seats in Parliament. But under its previous branding as Nigel Farage's Brexit party, they had a massive influence on the 2019 general election. By standing only in Labour seats, Brexit was able to drag enough voters from the established party to swing many constituencies to second-placed Conservatives. The reverse could happen in the next election. So my name is Joe Dyer, I'm currently a volunteer as running as spokesperson for North Dudley in the next general election. It's just about getting the point across over at the moment, I mean the way the things are going, uh, with the Conservative Party, let us down consistently. Don't really see Labour doing much of a better job personally, obviously that's why I'm here. And it's just about getting that idea across, it's about selling our point of view, getting our points across to people, obviously under Richard's leadership and trying to see how people take it. And hopefully we'll win, but you know, 
What do you think about the way that the Tories have handled the cost of living crisis? Oh, it's been terrible. I mean, this is the situation we're in now. Jeremy Hunt is uh, a disaster with the fact he's Chancellor. Um, Liz Truss lasted the best part of a month, you know, got lost to a lettuce, for God's sake. If you're losing to a lettuce, that kind of says something about your party as an overall, doesn't it, really? It's just a bit of a joke. But, and uh, Mishi Sunak is just... So right when you've got the money, you know, you can live happily and comfortably, but when the other people like myself are struggling, he doesn't bat an eyelid, he doesn't lose sweat, you know, he's just had a fine for his seatbelt, but that's penny day, and where for me, that'd be crippling. And is Brexit, will that be quite integral to where you understand? I'm a massive Brexiteer, and I believe we haven't had the Brexit we've wanted, or well, the Brexit we were promised as everything else. Which, in which respect, I do think more needs to be followed through. Northern Ireland needs the back and everything like that. And again, if I was to get in, I would fight hard for them and for the Brexit promise to obviously, you can only work with the cards you're given. So if it's just me or if I'm with others with it, I would try my hardest to get that done. But again, it's an upwards battle at this point. As we've seen on TV every day, illegal immigration's coming through massively and stuff like that. Uh, businesses are folding. We are not succeeding as a Brexit country. And it's not that we can't, it's that we're not because we've been let down by the Conservative government. And immigration will be quite an integral part? It will be one of the many things, yes. You know, we do have an immigration crisis and an illegal one included. You know, we are overpopulated. There's ways and means around it, but again, two years' time, that'll be more concentrated on at the, po the points. As discontent among the Conservative grassroots grows, Reform has the chance to rally supporters voting with their feet. So, first things first, Reform need to win some seats in Parliament, and for that, they need candidates. Welcome to Walsall, a true Brexit epicentre, teeming with voters disenfranchised by the Tories' 2019 departure from the European Union. But Tice's rebrand has a wider focus from Nigel Farage's original conception, broadened out to focus on common sense policies, including pledges to cut taxes, control immigration, and end NHS waiting lists. My name is Idrissi Sufyan. I'm here to campaign and help Reform UK. Well, Reform UK is a fantastic new political party that stands for freedom, not least because of what goes on these days. <laughs> Everyone is losing their freedoms to the big established parties, the political parties you have these days. Labour, and then the Tory party. Why we form Reform UK is just to come in for a change, to let Britain be great again. We have illegal invasion. Immigration is not working for everyone. That's the reason why we voted Brexit. And to be precise, we feel Reform UK is as a result of Brexit party. We want to take control of our borders and have our freedom, sovereignty, not to be accountable to EU countries. But Reform UK, after the Brexit, folded up, thinking that the Tory party is going to see through the referendum. Yet, this is here we are again. They failed us, not first, not second, not third, continuously. They continue to fail us. Amongst supporters in Bloxwich, the party's early promises can be found high on the agenda. Anti-lockdown sentiment is fervent amongst supporters and a creeping fear that the current government is approaching Orwellian levels of thought police intervention. Somebody recently was uh, actually prosecuted for thinking, for what she was thinking. She was praying quietly to herself apparently, uh, outside a clinic which was closed, so she was on her own, she wasn't speaking out loud, she was just praying quietly. and. The police actually asked her, what was she thinking? Now this is serious. When we're, when we're asked, what are you thinking? And then you're prosecuted for what you're thinking. We're going astray somewhere with our laws. Another one recently, uh, a gentleman was taken to court because, again, it was locally in Sutton Coalfield. He was um, arrested and uh, prosecuted for uh, taking some out-of-date cream cakes out of a bin at the back of a shop. Now the case was eventually thrown out but it's just an example of how this control culture has just gone too far. Uh, Nigel Farage, you know, I wish they'd all join together. Myself He's like. Still a friend of the party I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, do you th is that your number one issue as a voter? Number one issue? Um, I just want to see uh, a lot of change going in the country, like, you know what I mean? I mean, how can you, how can you have a, a, a guy um, who's, like, in, in, in Parliament, like, uh, lose five million 
Hello. right? And, and Richard Shunak is going to back him up and all that. I like, think it was you know 25 what I mean? million, actually. Well, 25. Well, I, well, I've been looking at five million, but at the end of the day, like it's wrong. Yeah. It is five million. Do you think How much is, is he on? I could, never, I could never earn that much in a lifetime. Yeah, it, it, my family put together, I couldn't earn that much unless I was Elvis Presley. Mm. <laughs> you know I mean? Immigration, free thought and a sprinkle of anti-vax are high on these voters' priorities. And one other key cornerstone, tackling Tory socialism. The reality is at the moment, the two main parties, the two different forms of socialism. You've got the con socialists and then you've got the red socialists. I just want to start by asking you about con socialists. Yes. Can you explain that? I can because I invented the word yeah. just over a year ago. And I remember a senior journalist, he looked at me and says, that's never going to catch on. And actually, it's now entering the lexicon. The conservatives are supposed to be the party of low tax, small state, backing small businesses, the party of entrepreneurs, the party of growth and sound finances. But actually, we've got the highest taxes since the Second World War, the highest government spending, the lowest growth forecast. Only today or yesterday, rumours coming out that the OBR is going to downgrade the growth forecasts. Wasteful government spending like we've never seen. <clears throat> so it's a form of socialism. So you've got the con-socialists and they're conning people. They say they're conservative, but they're not. They're conning people. So con-socialist is, I think, a fair expression. I'm hoping it'll enter the, the Oxford Dictionary. It could be my legacy to UK politics. Mm. Growth is absolutely the key to recovery. Now, the problem with the con-socialists is they want to increase taxes ever more. You can't believe it. They used to be the party of low tax, small state. But we've got the highest taxes for 70 years for all frontline, patient-facing, healthcare staff, ambulance workers, social care workers, for three years, they should pay zero basic rate income tax. You've got quite an exciting tax plan. Yeah. So you want to raise the threshold for income tax to £20,000, and then you want three years where NHS workers don't have to pay tax at all. Arguably, that's quite socialist. And no far from it. You're cutting taxes for the lowest paid, the least well off. That's a fantastic thing. I mean, that's, that's what a sensible, high-growth, uh, policies are all about and we say how we're going to pay for it which is at the moment voluntarily the Bank of England is paying interest on all the quantitative easing money that it printed 850 billion so we're paying 20 to 30 billion voluntarily to the city institutions we don't need to do that we shouldn't be doing that the ECB is not the Bank of Japan's not our own senior economists say we shouldn't be doing it former deputy governor of the Bank of England so Paul Tucker says we shouldn't be doing it. So that could pay for all of the healthcare plan. The third crisis is energy. The cost of energy. Only Reform UK has the guts to say that net zero is making us poorer and colder. You want cheap energy. Anyone else want cheap energy? Does anybody want expensive energy? Does anyone want to pay more for their energy? No. There must be someone who's nuts. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> for example, uh, the wind farms are, um, they're costing 11 billion a year in inflation-linked subsidies. They're making huge profits. It's all very well thinking, well, renewables is the answer. But what happens when the wind doesn't blow? It doesn't look so smart. We're pro-nuclear. I'm pro-cutting emissions. Mm -hmm. But the way to cut emissions is to use our own energy treasure. That's how you get the win-win. Mm -hmm. and, and, I'm, I'm, and before anybody calls me a denier, so I've got an electric car. My issue is that Westminster's net zero policy, it's the wrong policy at the wrong price in the wrong time frame. It'll make no difference to global emissions. It'll just make us poorer and colder. Yes, let's be a world leader in new technology. 
I want cleaner air. I want quieter cities. That's why I like an electric car. It's quiet. It's silent. It's amazing. But you can have quieter fossil fuel cars, combustion cars. That's how technology progresses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's progressive world. You'll call me a lefty now. <laughs> the fourth thing is immigration. Now, Reform UK came out of the Brexit party. We ensured that Brexit happened, finally. And then we've got illegal immigration. We've got the issue of the boats. Only Reform UK knows how to stop the boats. We've got a six point plan. Firstly, you've got to declare a national security threat. Secondly, we've got to leave the European Convention of Human Rights. The third thing is, you make it clear that zero illegal migrants will be resettled in the UK, zero. The fourth thing that you do is you do set up a whole new department of immigration. Because the truth is, the Home Office is broken. The fifth thing, the fifth thing is you've got to have a clear policy. You pick up safely the people out of the boats, into the border cutters, and you take back to France. Now, the Home Office lawyers and the lefty lawyers will tell you that's not possible. I'm telling you, I've read the international treaties. It's pretty dull stuff. I wouldn't recommend it. It'll send you to sleep. But I've read the existing laws, the existing rules. And the thing is, with political will and political courage, you can use the existing laws to pick up and safely take back. And the fifth thing you do, sorry, the sixth thing you do, is you set up offshore processing centres. If you do those six things, this issue stops. There's a real problem, and regrettably, far too many of them are coming as foot soldiers for criminal gangs. We've got to talk about it, and we've got to make sure that more and more people around the country hear that policy. Now, you know that Sunak, he knows he's got a major problem. He knows that if he doesn't stop the boats this year, he's finished. It's game over. The issue is that um, the Tories are petrified of our progress. So they've got two choices. Either they give up or they steal our policies. If they steal our policies, if Starmer steals our policies, it's the greatest form of flattery. It's not about me, it's about the right things for the country. We know this policy works. It worked in Australia. We know everything else has failed. Just think about that. If there's another 50 or 60,000 this year and another 30 or 40,000 before the election next year, where are they going to go? Think how much more money that's going to cost. If you think people are anxious here now, think how anxious people might be in a year's time. Carefully, rationally. And the vaccines are being, being withdrawn for, for, for one injury in 10,000. This is one. In yeah, and it's dangerous. It should be withdrawn immediately. And I, and I hear you, sir. But there is, there are as many experts on the other side. Paid work by Maybe, maybe not. Hang on. With voters exploring their options after 12 years of Conservative rule, Tice believes that the growing popularity of reform is a positive for British democracy offering more choice to disillusioned Conservative voters. There's a strong sense in Leave voting areas that Brexit is being betrayed, but could Tice be the man to deliver it? I've got the courage to talk about difficult issues, tell it as it is. And Andrew Marr said last week, my policy was a bit brutal. Well. I mean, sometimes you've got to make tough decisions. You've just got to tell it as it is. And that's how I see it. Mm -hmm.